Hungry Root is the easiest way to eat healthy. They send you fresh, high-quality groceries, simple, delicious recipes, and essential supplements. It's like having someone else do all the planning and the shopping so you don't have to even think about it. Right now, Hungry Root is offering Juicy Scoopers 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash Juicy Scoop to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash Juicy Scoop. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. I'm going to tell you about the only deodorant you'll ever need. It's called Lumi Whole Body Deodorant, and it's formulated for all the places that tend to get stinky when the weather warms up, like your pits, privates, and your feet. And for me, it's under the boob under the boob. Not only does it go where other deodorants don't, it's also just outrageously effective. One application in the morning is clinically proven to block odor all day. As a special offer for Juicy Scoop listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals over 40% off their starter pack. Use code Juicy Scoop for 15% off your first purchase at LumiDeodorant.com. That's code Juicy Scoop at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. Heather McDonald has got the juicy scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales for real life, Mr. Segment, serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have. The dynamic comedic duo, hosts of Dumb Gay Podcast. Welcome back, Brandy <laughs> Howard and Julie Goldman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You have come back from a whirlwind. Whirlwind. Yeah. Is it world? I think it's whirl. It's like whirl. But we have been on a whirlwind. Mm-hmm. Wait, it's not. <laughs> it's whirlwind. It's, it's stu- not the world? No. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> It's W H. What is this thing? What is this thing? Is this a cu- cu- cucumber? <laughs> cu- no, I. I, I kind of thought wind. it was both. World I thought wind. you could. You know I mean, what? You were, if you went around the world, Completely wouldn't fair. that be a world? world? It would be a world wind. It's, okay, that's yeah. a fair. That's fair. You yeah. were on a cruise. You yeah. were performing. Yeah. And your ba- How was your trip? <sighs> the trip was great. The trip was intense. The trip was a lot of work, but we got to go. And we've decided that Belgium is our new favorite country. Oh. So we highly recommend it to everyone. It's so underrated. It was unbelievable. Uh, it's like, oh, really? It's kind of like Paris on crack, but it's not as like sexy, glamorous as Paris because mm-hmm. nothing beats that. True. But the entire country is like all little mini Paris's. Every city you go to, so it's it, just beyond cute yeah. and beyond. just beyond like eye candy. Yeah, just every building and mm-hmm. cobblestone streets and like medieval squares with towering. And what was the weather like a couple weeks ago when you were it there? It was hot. It okay. was hot. It was pretty nice. Though. It was but in it was... the seventies. But Julie thinks it's hot when it's seventy-one. <laughs> Do you really? I do run hot. Yes. (laughs) Okay. I do run hot. It's true. Um, Well, let's get into some hot news. Besides us all joining you in Las Vegas, people, (laughs) Mm. September 21st, we are making our plans. We're doing a full girls weekend. Oh, my God. Girls trip. It is a Uh, Shannon is coming, too. We are going out Friday night. Maybe we'll tell you what we're doing. Maybe we won't. But um, it's going to be pretty epic. And then we'll definitely be talking about it on the show Us on four Saturday. have so- gone out in like Palm Desert and gotten so <laughs> ham. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, we have fun. First- we send it. Yeah, we, we, we like to send it. it. We love to send it. We like to send it. Yeah. We, we send it. This our first time oh, without Chris Frangiola. Oh, that's right. Without any like, you know, well, I guess Drakey Poo will be there. Drakey Poo <laughs> is coming uh, to um, film it and help with everything. But... What I think is when we do our wild thing is we will go to a nice dinner. Then mm-hmm. we will let my 21-year-old son go gamble, do whatever he wants. Mm-hmm. And then the girls will go do what girls do. <laughs> See if you can figure it out. Okay. I probably I so won't tell you. I'll, I'll probably tell everybody because who cares? Why not? Yeah. Um, 
So anyway, everything's at HeatherMcDonald.net, but go to that show. Get your girls weekend or your sexy husband weekend or whatever. Go see the show. Um, Okay, Justin Bieber is a dad. And Haley Bieber, they had a little baby boy. Welcome Jack Blues Bieber. Mm. Very cute name. Mm -hmm. Classic. I like it. Good for them. Yeah. I like this classic photo, this version of this classic photo. I think it's a really cute picture. Just a foot. Yeah, you know how they always do that? Yeah. Or the hand. But I thought this one in particular, the foot is actually next level cute. Look yeah. how the toes are like spread apart. I just think it's a really, really cute photo. Also, she's showing off like the new, is this like a postmodern neo French manicured nail? <laughs> yeah. Because from what I, in my it's mind, very beautiful. my mother mm-hmm. has it square. I didn't realize oh. though that it could be. Yeah. Like, a, like that. Is that a French manicure? That, that is. Is that, that is, not? but it's a new French manicure. You're right. So congrats to them. It's going to be a very cute baby, don't you think? No. Oh, it's totally going to be gorgeous. Because they're so cute. And can sing and model. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, now, this just popped up in my memories. This was the last day of Chelsea Lately. Oh. Why would I have not said? 2014, 10 years ago, you it was have not 10 aged years ago. that day. 10 years ago. Today? Yeah. Oh, yeah. With the last taping. And then, um, and that's where I got this photo (gasps) of Jennifer. I call her Jay. Right. Jennifer Lopez and I. When you call her on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when we met. That's when I asked her why she looks so young and I touched her waist. (laughs) And I said, is it La Mer? And she was like, and I'm like, you've said that in in an interview once. But she probably knew she was already going to launch her own skincare. So she probably didn't want to admit that at one time it was La Mer. Anyway, we got along great. I like how the now photo's <laughs> not there. Well, you know, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> oh, but also, I don't have a more uh, recent photo right, of my right. best friend and I. Right, because yeah. you weren't in town when she had the Hamptons birthday of the I, Bridgerton. Right, and I wasn't in town when they got married two years ago. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah at the Georgian uh, mansion. You're right. Well, we'll but get a new updated photo for now that, that she's single. We're going to hang out more. Um, <laughs> so many, so much more news about the J Lo. There's literally been 25 articles, and I'm going to go through the highlights. Ben is supposedly dating Kick Kennedy. What? She is one of Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s eight children. She is 36. She's a pretty brunette. She's just like a very East Coast looking classic. Irish looking gal. Like Jennifer Garner, quite frankly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he has a type. Yes. And we can't apparently get out of bed without hearing about Robert F. Kennedy Jr. or something <laughs> to do with him. Like, yes. I cannot believe this is what Ben Affleck is choosing to do just at this moment. But we're that. now, this is a non political <laughs> show, so everyone just relax. Yeah. But I will say, knowing that his wife is Cheryl Hines mm-hmm. from Curb Your Enthusiasm, who I used to do the Growlings with, who, um, you know, talk on the phone and have fun with. I was noticing that, that you know, she was not saying, doing anything. Well, now this weekend, they have come after her. They yep. have come, the, the, the people are angry with her. And how could you, you know, even be married to such a monster or whatever? Mm-hmm. So I started to go, I looked on her thing and like, you know, just a happy photo of like her and a friend. Yes. And then you just look that like the last like 30 comments right at the top were just like the worst. And yeah, she hasn't been vocal about anything. She's never, I haven't seen her like be with him at anything. Um and hey, that's their deal. Whatever. It doesn't mean that Whatever. they're not in love. She's probably just like, if you really make it there, then I'll I'll pack my bag and show Toast. up. But until then, yeah. I don't want to get those mean comments. And Heather, stop talking about it. Yeah. Okay, Well, Cheryl. but here well, we are with Ben Affleck getting involved somehow. Strangely. Well, they were seen at the Polo Lounge. Who hasn't been seen there? But <laughs> um, eating a MacArthur salad. Have you ever had the McCarthy salad? At the Polo Lounge? Yes. Yes. Can I tell you the trick of all tricks? What? I say no cheddar cheese cubes. Give me crumbled goat cheese oh. on that salad, and it makes a world of difference. Mmm. <laughs> I want to look I that up. Had whispering angel. 
was the, po- the polo lounge. I just years ago. bought two logs of goat cheese this morning. <laughs> <laughs> the word log just <laughs> reminds me of a big shit. <laughs> yeah, well, no, just makes well, me so hungry. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, they are dating, supposedly. They've been seen a number of times. And so, are they even divorced yet? J-Lo and Ben Affleck? So she, she um, filed just last week. Uh-huh. And because he supposedly, all, but, okay, so she filed last week. Which was the exact date of they got married legally somewhere. Then they had the the wedding, um, which uh, Jay Shetty performed. Jay Shetty is a weird grifter, in my opinion. <laughs> in oh, my that's right. opinion, that's right. Based on interviewing this um, this guy who did a big piece on him and many of the things that he said, Jay Shetty is like this. Said he was this monk. And all this stuff, and he has this huge following, and he's like, he's like the spiritual guru to all these people, and he cried and everything, and said the wedding was so he never seen a love like this before. Well, didn't he marry them? Yeah, he oh, married yeah. them. Married yeah. them. Yeah. So anyway, getting back to this, so I've noticed a push in the J Lo PR machine because she has gotten so much shit for the last few months of people not liking her <clears throat> ever since she did her. Look at that girl with that crazy, crazy <laughs> hair, Ryan, running the streets of the Bronx. <laughs> Who's that crazy girl? Um, ever since then, and the dancing with the cane and everything that she did, and her show, it, it, she started to get a lot of dislike. Okay, then I so now she said this date of separation she put as um, April twenty sixth. Oh, which I thought was interesting. The I was trying to see when that. When the movie came out in Netflix, because I, I looked it up and it was only the premiere at the like oh. film festival. But when was that premiere? Because I feel like that's kind of where it started. The documentary about the greatest love story ever told is kind of where I think she started to get some haters and get some people being like, what is her deal? So she has now launched what I think is a, a campaign to make us realize J Lo's not the problem. It's resting dick face, Ben Affleck. Mm-hmm. He is the problem. He cheated on her. I remember he cheated on her. What I remember is there was some story about him being in a strip club in Canada when they were engaged the first time. Then, of course, Jennifer Gardner, he cheated on allegedly with a nanny. Remember that story? Mm-hmm. Also with that girl that was a producer at SNL for years, that Lindsay girl. Yep. And then, remember, she was driving him to rehab, and she stopped at, at Jack in a Box. Mm-hmm. Jennifer Garner, <laughs> while already divorced, took her cheating husband for his last Jack in a Box run before she took him to rehab. So let's just remember all of that and the horrific back tattoo. But <laughs> he swooped down with his falcon or whatever it is on his back <laughs> and pursued Jennifer, and, and she fell in love with him again, and she's fucking pissed. Because according to the sources, he did not try to to patch it up. Uh, every single thing online, because the internet is you know furious. Yes. And <sighs> what whether J Lo, you know, and her camp paid for it or what? Now the narrative has shifted to like serial cheater, serial yes. deviant, right? You know, and and they're just and everyone says the same terms, and I'm like, well, they're really going in on old Ben Affleck. Well, let me now. just show you some more. <laughs> um, he was out last night with his. Uh, as my dad would say, asshole buddy. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Matt Damon. They went to Toscana out in L.A., which I think is in Brentwood, and had a cute dinner. Uh, we're going to have to hit Beverly Hills. <laughs> I okay? know. We need, to, we need a night out. Yeah, because the assholes are out. <laughs> the ass- we need to get out. They've all dropped off their kids at college. <laughs> right. And they're lurking. Yes, they're they lurking. are lurking. Um, but so then this article came out. Ben Affleck reportedly had control over Jennifer Lopez's documentary, that it was he was fully part of it. He pushed for it. And that yet in it, there's a a part where he says, I have an addiction problem with alcohol, but she has an addiction to likes and followings and fame and everything. And I mean, he made sure he said that and he made sure it was in and he made sure that I got word of it and talked about it eight times. <laughs> yeah. So but that's not even that groundbreaking that she has an addiction to likes and 
It's Most just, people do. It's just kind it's of, not really, it's, a, it's an underhanded shady kind of thing yeah. to say because well, it's, a, him, yes. it's a turnoff. Yeah, it's people. yeah, it's like that's true. If you, that you're a thirsty bitch, you're a fame whore. It's yeah. never complimentary. Mm-mm. You know, when someone is like, "I never wanted to be famous. I wanted to do the work." Yeah, who's I wanted to act. Oh. I wanted to act. I wanted to write. I wanted to direct. I love it when people laugh. If I, I could just perform, if I could just perform for two people, oh, it's all, it's at all a that matters. Small theater. They that's never, all I wanted. They never to cancel a show. Oh, if one person's there smiling. <laughs> I've done my job. <laughs> <laughs> so right. um, I see. I one see. thing I remember I he see. said in another interview, I think it was with, um, might have been with um, Kevin Hart, but he did an interview uh, that that I saw that was after they were supposedly bro- breaking up, but it wasn't official. And he said, you know, we were with the kids and um, we were going to go see this play and the, it was so much traffic at Times Square. We just had to get out and just walk the half a block, otherwise we would miss the curtain or whatever. And he's like, we walk out, and then it's just like women coming up to Jay, you know, Jennifer just crying, whatever. And my daughter always jokes that she's going to write a book and, you know, with stories like this called My Stepmother Was Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> and right away, myself included, there were some comments, wow, was? Um, oh. That even do, when he did that interview, which they were together when he filmed the interview, the book title for Violet's book was going to be My Stepmother Was Jennifer Lopez. Oh. Mm. I would love to read the book. Uh-huh. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> well, I she recently too. wore a dress from her, so she's still okay with raiding her closet. She wore J-Lo's dress. I imagine that she's still close with the kids, don't you think? Or at least... Not maybe not close, but not 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 no animosity. Well, I'm glad that you asked that okay, because good. she wanted to make sure that this story got out. Wait, I'm going to go back. Ben, Aff- another Page Six article. Ben Affleck has reportedly lost contact with Jennifer Lopez's two kids, despite the singer singer's continued efforts. Well, of course he I lost that. contact. Yeah, he doesn't care. He's yeah. off with Ma- Matt Damon. Yeah, you know, dick hunting or whatever they're doing. Well, no, they went with the, the wife was there too. The, oh, okay. For the hunt. Well, yeah. the I think she still would speak to his, because he's got like two little girls and a son, right? I think Jennifer well, Lopez would still talk I, to them I, and I, Jennifer Garner. This is the thing. These kids aren't texting um, Ben and being like, hey, it's your former stepson. Would you like to go to Dunkin' Donuts? He's the one that's going to have to make the effort, mm-hmm. and he probably won't. Mm-hmm. And Or he'll be like, well, I, I texted him and didn't write. You know, you got to try a lot with teenagers. But- I think that um, hopefully, you know, Violet wants to borrow more of Jennifer's clothes and she can keep that relationship going. I think it'll be harder for her to keep the relationship with the younger kids that aren't that are under 18, his two kids. But whatever. She wanted to make sure we knew that. Then. um, Oh, here it was that this was the sign. Not enough followers to fulfill J-Lo's sense of longing and pain. That was his direct quote, Ben Affleck, about Jennifer Lopez. So she now. Ben Affleck had not going anywhere transcribed inside her wedding rings. I remember she had that weird lime green stone. And she said, that's my favorite color. (laughs) And um, that was her diamond. It was really not attractive. It looked like a Jolly Rancher. That was her (laughs) diamond from him. Like compared to all her other ones, the pink ones, the yellow ones, all the other engagement rings. This one to me was not attractive, but she was just had run out of like different looks. Yeah. So she was like, let's go with a lime green, like very rare stone. Um, but so, well, hey, he did go somewhere. Patty he went Stanger to Toscana. <laughs> and Patty and, and the hey, Polo Lounge. What? Patty Stanger liked it. Oh. <laughs> I mean, and she's an expert on relationships. <laughs> so I'm sure she could have. <laughs> Not seen not, this one coming. Not Patty Singer at the top of <laughs> the, the first post. one. I know when like I that. when I do these photos, I kind of like sometimes I'm like I sometimes I leave it because I'm like sometimes it is somebody that we know yeah. that just happens to get that top oh, billing, and I'm God. like, oh, I wonder if we'll see who else are liking these things. Um, so um, so here we go. J Lo wants to change her last name from Affleck to Lopez. Well, of course. I unless, unless she can be the spokesperson for Affleck, then I don't think that she should 
keep it. Has she I, been credited on these recent movies as Jennifer Affleck? No way. I didn't see no, that No, I saw Atlas. I saw the latest I, one. Yeah, and I, it was Jennifer Lopez. And I just want to say this. I know everyone can do whatever they want, but I do think there's a tier of women, J-Lo is one of them, where if you marry her, sir, you should be taking her last name. That's how upper, that's how famous... I can't deal with the fact that she would take his name. She's so famous and so rich and so powerful. He should take her goddamn name. It's but if some women want to do it because they are that powerful and they want so badly to be the wifey and to be like I'm I'm Miss West, mm-hmm. Kim Kardashian West, I'm Miss Affleck, mm. like that's my man, you know, now she's like what the fuck were they thinking? Now do I think that she went to the social security office and waited in line. No, <laughs> I don't think that she did. No. I did it after when I was pregnant with Drake. I went. And so I have it on my last name because I just thought. But not until you were having a kid. Not until I was having a kid because I just thought if there was ever a moment where like I had a different name than than him, then I, you know, legally something could happen. Right. That's the only reason I went. Yeah, I didn't well, go the first kids, year and a half or two years. No, and you first don't two years I wasn't name. pregnant. Yeah, <laughs> right. and I don't yeah. really use it. No, no. Right. no. So, but yeah. Anyway, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Hungry Root is the easiest way to eat healthy. They send you fresh, high quality groceries, simple, delicious recipes, and essential supplements. It's like having someone else do all the planning and the shopping, so you don't have to even think about it. I am telling you, this is the greatest. I filled out a little form. I got my groceries. I got a delicious chicken that all I had to do was just throw in the oven, and it was so good, so flavorful, all seasoned and delicious. Hungry Root gets to know your personal health goals, so whether it's dietary restrictions, favorite foods, how much time you want to spend cooking, and more, Then they build your personalized cart with your grocery needs for the week, including easy four-ingredient recipes to put those groceries to use. Each order is fully customizable, so you can take their suggestions or choose anything you want. They've got fresh produce, high-quality meat and seafood, healthy snacks, smoothies, sweets, ready-to-eat meals, kid snacks and meals, vitamins and supplements, and much more. Everything from Hungry Root follows a simple standard. It's got to taste good, be quick to make, and contain whole trusted ingredients. Right now, Hungry Root is offering Juicy Scoopers 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash Juicy Scoop to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash Juicy Scoop. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. All right, now Alex Rodriguez shares a cryptic quote after Jennifer Lopez. He just posted some weird thing, which the quote that he did on Tuesday, August 20th, the same day that his former fiance filed for divorce, he put on his Instagram stories, you either go one way or the other. You might as well be the one deciding the direction. Talk about cryptic. What the fuck is he even talking about? Right. What does that have to do? You mean like when you decided to cheat on your wife with Madison Cawthorn or whatever her name is? <laughs> Madison Beer? Or Madison, is whatever. Beer? What is her last well, name? I don't know. Then you, you went, that's the way you went? I mean, okay. Like, I don't know what or, you have to weigh in on it. It Madison was just Cawthorn. a quote that he liked that was because he was stuck in traffic. I don't know, Who knows? why he did it. Read it one more time. Okay. You <sighs> either go one way or the other. You might as well be the one deciding the direction. Okay. I mean, if we take it out of context. You have to go one way or the other. You might as well be the one, the one who's deciding. In, like, who's in like, control. Like Jennifer Lopez decided, I'm done. Yes. Because do we think Jennifer Lopez decided or do we think Ben Affleck decided? I think he completely ghosted her. I think she was like, you know, I'm going to look hot. I'm going to go to Italy in this white bathing suit. I'm going to have this party. Fuck it. I don't care that he's not there. He's going to see that I don't need him, that, you know, and I just think he just really wasn't into her anymore. I just don't think he wanted to be married to her anymore. I don't think there's anything she could have done to save it at that point. And well, then she would have gone he, on and kept, though, if if he was willing to keep faking it, you think they would have faked it for like another year? They, But they weren't faking it. They hadn't been seen together in a really long time. Oh, okay. They weren't showing up. He wasn't slamming the door, merely missing her ankle <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anymore. Like it had been months and months. He never was around for her birthday. He never visited her in the Hamptons. Well, then I guess one could you say... You did not go to BevMo and sign any of those Delola bottles 
with her. <laughs> yeah. Well, then no amount of love or affection or a woman's attention will ever be enough for him. Oh, yeah. I guess that we should say that on his thing for yeah. his documentary. No one, there's no one beautiful enough. There's no one young enough. There's no one old enough. There's no, no one, one loyal enough. Loyal enough. No. There's no one anything enough because your addiction is yourself, sir, and your whatever your and alcohol or whatever. Too, so yeah, go you're gamble. Thirst bucket too. And we, by the way, we know in, in in all of his gambling years, yes, that Jennifer Lopez's mom also won twice huge at the slots. Mm. Yes. With, Talk about d- great luck. Yeah, during the time with Ben Affleck. Like, they were like, hell yeah, let's go gamble. And then she won huge twice, which I love. And then there's also those rumors that he would tip very, very well at the gambling. Mm. And then she would come back with her bun and be like, that was too much. <laughs> oh. And like cut it in half. <laughs> That's too bad. That's hilarious. Yes. That is too no, bad. I don't just even rumors, care. Just rumors. But okay. Sh- well, I mean, I, mean I, I just want to say that yes. I really, there's few parties... Like Leo's New Year's party, even though that's probably just like an SA, like an assault <laughs> waiting to happen. On and they whoever. have one of those things that I just gave you to sign. To release. Yeah, exactly. But I still am like, there's only one place to be on New Year's and it's there. Um, or the lady from um, Queen, oh, Queen of Versailles, Versailles when she was going to have that New Year's party. I was like, that's the party to go to. But that Bridgerton party, people were trying to drag it online. Like, it's too hot. Everyone's dressed. It's 100 million degrees in the Hamptons. They're all in these dresses. She's a million years old. Why is she having a birthday party? I was like, I think that looks so fun. Of course. I would, like, kill to be in a ball gown sweating. Yeah, who's doing, who's writing that? Like, I'd like to see that person. (laughs) (laughs) Don't you realize your ship has sailed, J-Lo? You're so old. You're so old. No. Uh, looks- why are you wearing crop tops, J Lo? Because <laughs> uh, you can. Um, mm. I feel sad because I remember when they got back together, and I was like, "How fun for her to be like." Uh, guess what? My body's even better than it was 20 years ago. Mm. Get ready to rock your world. No, I think they were super passionate in love, and I think yeah, I think he's just fucked up. Okay, he's so incredible. moving on. Okay, uh, Jennifer Gardner supposedly was um, going their separate ways, but since then, no, they were fine. Her, she and her boyfriend. Oh, but the pos- supposedly God. the boyfriend was, sources say, getting annoyed with her having to cater to Ben because of what he's going through with J-Lo and always being there and the kids and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but, um, first bucket. He's so fucking annoying. Okay, <laughs> also, Ugh. they won't go to the red carpet to do this movie that he and... Matt Damon are producing it's about a true story about some wrestler and she plays the mother Mm. of the wrestler but now she'll be the only one on the red carpet which again he's like great I don't want to go to Toronto I don't want to be on the red carpet the the, they put all together them on the red carpet like in the last two years and in the beginning he's just like whispering and laughing and by the end he's just like <laughs> so fucking annoyed. Yeah. I think he'll be sweating at Toscano with Matt Damon and his wife. I don't think he's going to be anywhere near. I think he's going to take time off even from work because that's what he usually does. What's he so mad about? Why so what was he I so mad about probably, all the time? He's just sick of the industry. Sorry. And he's you know, not sick of the industry. He loves the industry. He was sick that the fact that she was more beloved and more famous and richer than he. Oh, yeah. that's good. That is good. I'm uh, bummed out. I thought that their <clears throat> second chance at love was like super romantic. Yes. And I was like really super into it. And it's disappointing. I'm disappointed in him. I'm super disappointed in him. He like is an idiot. I yeah. hope she never loses that thing, that Elizabeth Taylor thing. <laughs> and I think Kate the Hudson, love of love. I, I think Kate Hudson has it too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. They just. And Kim Kardashian. Yeah, they'll marry. She wants to be Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah, and and I and I I'm, I'm into it. I'm like I think it's kind of like iconic. Like just do you do it? Don't ever okay. grow up. I have a vision. Okay. <laughs> of J Lo's next Great. man. Okay. <laughs> it is going to be like a Jeff Bezos type. Oh, oh. that's not what I was thinking. And he thinking. might not even be American. Um. Will he be good looking? Yes. Okay, so he won't be a Jeff Bezos type. <laughs> but he will be like a he'll rich be good, he'll billionaire He'll be good looking, person. but he's a billionaire in another country. Mm. But good looking for a billionaire or good looking really? <laughs> good looking for a billionaire and he'll be a couple years younger than she. 
Oh. And you know, and she will, f- and she will love it. And, I was picturing, and maybe younger. that will be the first time that she starts to slow down on all the stuff. Maybe she'll then find herself in her now late fifties, still looking amazing, and be like, "All right, like I just my kids are in college. I just want to like chill and be a rich person. And this guy fucking loves me, and I'm just gonna take a bath and of diamonds." I was mm. gonna r- whisper to Julie and then see if it matched yours, and it didn't. What was yours? Well, mine was definitely younger. Okay, but for everyone s- could do a prediction, you guys. I'm, for you s- can do your own. Well, <laughs> for some weird reason, I was picturing like some uber hot, like just fuck boy, like who Kristen Cavallari's with, Ooh, who you saw at Montana Stagecoach, like yeah. one of them, just like randomly. That guy is like ten years younger than Chris. I Kristen think Cavallari. she can have that. Okay, she can just have hard. Bone time, okay. Hard bone, bone, bone time. time. Take it to bone, bone time. Write that then, down and next, make it a bumper the next sticker. Serious one, whether it's marriage or not, is going to be someone, okay, that you know, well, is really up there. Let's hope she takes the train to Pound Town on her way to Billionaire, Billionaire Town. And I also okay. want to say that Lauren Sanchez should not invite her on the yacht. That's all I'm saying. That's good advice. Very good advice. I know you guys are probably friendly. Good advice. You know, don't let Jeff Bezos around (laughs) J Lo. Yes, that is good one. Base love. Um, Speaking of yachts, this is um, this story that I talked about. This uh, billionaire's uh, sail. It was a sailboat yacht had gotten in this weird tornado and capsized, and so sad that. Six people, I think, have been killed now. Um, And they are launching an investigation. Authorities are launching a manslaughter investigation after identifying the victims. They are, like, saying it shouldn't have been anchored there. Mm. How did the water get in it? Mm. Was it negligent? Were these people qualified to be Mm. working on this boat? Was this, like, what is going on? Because there was... A crazy thing with the one billionaire whose body now has been found. He was facing fraud, ch- fraud charges for 11 years with his partner because he sold his his business, which for well, he sold it for 11 billion dollars to Hewlett Packard, and they said it was only worth three. Mm. So they were saying they tried to get him up on fraud charges, and oh. he he and the partner prevailed. Two days before the boat went um, down, his partner was killed riding his bike. <gasps> Someone hit him. Oh shit! Yeah, that's not even manslaughter at that point. That's, that's full that's, murder. That's this is murder. Yeah, like they'll you but, know they'll I mean, accuse the crew. But there was yeah, but there was a natural. There was okay. like a weird untimely thing. Um and like crew member like a died a, wow. a chef. But or mm. but then it's just very strange. So they're looking into it. Is there any way that that natural phenomenon could have been man made? Or you, no. maybe they saw it coming, though, and then you parked it Was there. it a wave or was it from under the water? They said, like, they should never have been in the cabins. Like, it was at the current? Like, they, they would have known yeah. that it was coming and because the people that died were in the cabins. This one woman who was one of the attorneys for him, it, it, you know, prevailed. She, she lived with her husband and their one-year-old baby because they were on the deck. So then they were thrown into the water and she had to hold her baby oh up God. above her head oh for an God. hour wow. until they could all get into the mm. lifeboat. But the people that were in their cabins, it like capsized with the big, you know, you sail thing. It capsized mm. and then they couldn't get they out. Couldn't get out. But <gasps> I guess they shouldn't have been there. They should have woken them up and known. Or the other part is, did they leave some hatch open or something that caused the water to go in? Yeah. That's the story, though, is the woman who held the baby above the water. Mm-hmm. That's the documentary I want to see. Yeah. Or this one. Okay. Famous gay penguin, Sven. <laughs> oh, no. Dead at he 11. died. <laughs> to remind you guys, um, we Sven... partied with him at the Abbey, and it was super fun. <laughs> remember? <laughs> I, I totally remember. Mm. He loved... His partner was named Magic. Because he was. And they... <laughs> Magic has, has survived? They, the yeah, widow? Magic started... The minute he knew his partner was dead, oh, he started yeah. singing. And other penguins came around and sang too. Oh. I mean, that it's like so sad. penguins are so horny. The gay men's choir. Yeah. <laughs> gay men, they were a bum titty bum 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 titty bum bum. They lived in Austria. And everyone round. They, I mean, <laughs> like That's a, so dumb. 
<laughs> bum, they sing bum, Amazing bum, Grace. Yeah. <laughs> amazing Grace. <laughs> do, do, ba, do, ba, ba, ba. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. he, so he was in an Australian um, aquarium for years. And mm. they, you know, once they were such a strong couple, they gave them a, a baby chick egg, yep. like a rogue egg. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the mother was just like, fuck it, and wanted to go she to was a teen Juicy. mom. She, she was a teen mom. Or she wanted to go to Juicy Scoop show in Vegas. She <laughs> right. just failed. She got her <laughs> uncles to raise it, and so they did raise. And this has happened with lots of penguins. They are the gayest of the animals, I think. I think they're second to gay to the bonobo monkeys, which are also super gay. Do they have the pink assholes? I don't. Know, I think they might. <laughs> the can I remember? Butts? They're omnisexual bonobo, but the bonobo monkeys, like they oh. all do it. All they're oh. like gay, and they'll do straight. It's a little different but than I, being gay. I mean, but I, this, I, that's true. But they do gay <laughs> stuff too. But these straight up like parenting as gay as like and a partners wear, and wearing a tuxedo for their <laughs> whole life. T- yeah, dress and perfect. And walking and wa- the way they. I mean, they yeah. are meant to be. Yeah, meant to be. That is so. Mm. So do we know why Sven? Died? It was natural causes. Okay. Natural so causes. So they only well. lived to like a, like eleven. Hmm. He was a bottom. It was a good life. Oh, he was. A... <laughs> I heard they were verse. Mm. But, yeah. Um... When both of them are in the tuxedo, I'm pretty sure they both do everything. Um, but yeah, um, that is so. Or maybe it was a top, okay, and that's now why I they came around and story. Story. I was. Oh, yeah. I have so a story tall. that. Um, <laughs> What did you say? I'm sorry, what? I said maybe Sven was a top, and that's why they all came around and sang, right. because there's so few tops. Yeah, apparently the there's, little, there's few tops. That's what they say. That's what they say, that there's a shortage of tops. And then I'm always like, well, Julie can volunteer. <laughs> She's a stone-cold top, honey. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. Um, <laughs> oh, so they were coming around crying, like, like in mourning, because the one top... Yep. Right, the top's gone. Oh. So now magic is like, who will fill my, I won't say it, <laughs> well, my void. Well, <laughs> yeah. It's, um, you never know. It's sad that it comes at the end of Gay Pride Summer. Mm, mm-hmm. Good that it wasn't at the beginning. So yeah. at least he got to enjoy the summer. Yeah. His last Pride um, Summer. I have a story that I don't know if I can tell. I know, I know, I can't. I saw, I read, I, ha, I read two seconds of it. Okay. I saw it and I couldn't deal, I couldn't believe it. And Heather, I like Lily okay, Allen. Heather, first, first I'm, I gonna jump, I'm gonna jump to the end of the story You know first. you're trolling, Just Julie. So, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. The dog, okay, this is about Lily Allen's dog. And before I tell the story, I want you to know that it is, that the dog, which could not be cuter, <sighs> Black, little, cute, looks like a, like a little lab type mix, mm-hmm. is with another family. But let me tell you what Lily Allen did. As you know, everybody has a podcast. You legally have to have <laughs> one. Um, no matter what you're doing in your life, yeah. if you're in Hollywood, you have to have a podcast. And people, I guess, are like, I don't have all the juicy stories like Heather McDonald does, so I'll just share this one today. And she told a story about her dog. She said, we got this little puppy, little dog. And it ate all three of our passports, myself <laughs> and my two kids. And that dog like ruined my life. But it's like you're hearing her voice with the English accent. And it just sounds like she's like, no, the dog was very poorly behaved of sort. And then uh, it ruined our summer because the kids were supposed to go with their father in another country. But they couldn't. So that affected their relationship all because of this dog. And so I... um got you know I, I got rid of it i had to like every time i looked at it it just infuriated me that um the dog ate the passports you know <laughs> i lost my passport twice in one trip oh. in china and it turned out it was in my own pocket oh now i traveled with now now did brandy get rid of me <laughs> as a friend did she say i can't be around you anymore because you ruined the trip Which I did. Because you lost your passport in a communist country (laughs) Which I did two times in a row. Did I ruin the trip? Yes. (laughs) Did she get rid of me? (laughs) Throw me to the curb? Put me in the garbage? No. Because that's what friends do. She didn't rehome you? She didn't rehome me. (laughs) Did she yell at me? Yes. Yes. Many times. (laughs) However, when you bring... I mean, I just... I, 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 We've all had our dogs. Peter lost his passport once, too. Oh, where was it? Well, we're going uh, to the wedding of Joe Francis, Girls Gone Wild. <laughs> um, and as we were flying there, the plane had to be turned around and go back to LAX because something happened and there was no place for it to land. 
So we already lost a day. It was only going to be, we're only going to be there three nights. So then the next day, all of us, all the people go and to get on the plane. And we get in the car. We stayed at a hotel and like had a fun night with people near LAX. We get in the car and he's like, can't find it. So then I said, goodbye. Goodbye. I'm with his sisters. <laughs> goodbye. Oh, you were like, Peter, go, go home? I, I go go back to the hotel and look for it. And if you, and then meet me, meet us at the gate. And if you don't, you don't. Like, I, we only, I only have an hour, a day and a half left of this fucking yeah. trip. Peter gets out of the car. Everyone high fives. <laughs> Woo! Girls weekend. <laughs> Joe Francis' wedding. Girls gone wild. <laughs> Peter's not here. <laughs> the passport. <laughs> Woo! I, like, you're like Shannon. Anyway, way to go hiding Peter's anyway, passport. It was in his suitcase. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we had. Listen, yeah. I'm the queen and king of that more than once. I've, I loop, and in general, I lose everything. She was but... in, it was in her pocket. <laughs> it was in a passport holder around her neck. And she said she lost it in the airport when we landed. She's like, can't find my passport. I can't find it. I lost it. I'm like, we're a baggage claim. It has to be right here somewhere. We just went through through customs. And, and she's like, I lost it. We searched the whole airport in China. <laughs> and you didn't notice that th- there was something hanging on her neck no, either? No, no. I she, looked she through looked- it on my own self. <laughs> <laughs> Heather, <laughs> then do you know when you get a new passport? This is for everyone to know. Um, but you have your old one. Yeah. And then she lost the <laughs> new one. She lost the new one mm-hmm. in still in China. And then that was in now we're scared. Does the old one even work? Or has it been? Oh, no! It's been deactivated. Yeah. So now we're still there. She's so I had to get another second. new one. No, they called from the police station. Oh, right! I had to go pick it up. Or I someone called, found yeah, it. Someone found but... it. Well, thank God you weren't traveling with Lily Allen. Well, yes. this is what I'm saying. I listen, and we, you know, we all have dogs. And also, learn about the stories not to tell. Like, for, learn about the stories not to tell, bitch. You don't learn. know. We would have never known that story, no. and now forever we're going to remember you as that bitch. Or at least <laughs> be upset about it. There's extenuating circumstances where people, yeah. through illness or moving or yeah, you homes, can rehome a dog. Fine, you can rehome a dog, but you better be. You know, I, I didn't want you. Your your whole attitude is not the dog ruined your dog didn't ruin your well, life. Had, remember the Brady Bunch it. episode where they were going to get rid of Tiger. No. Because they thought that Jan was allergic to it and that all the kids hated Jan. They were like, uh, can we get rid of Jan? <laughs> yeah, per and usual. then, I think it was Jan, and then when they're like, they got another person to take the dog, and then they're like, oh, Jan, will you get whatever, his little food or something? And then she walks back and she goes, uh, chew! And they realize, no, she's allergic to the food, or she's allergic uh, to the spray or whatever. And they were able to keep Tiger. But yeah, those those kids wanted to rehome Jan. And you know, I know exactly what you would have told her because you've told it to us before. And it is from, you know, many years of of living in LA, but most particularly probably Dorit. You can't rehome a dog without saying that a bit one of your kids. Right. That's all you have to do. All she she, she could have said, it ate the passport and mauled my child's face. <laughs> yes. But that's okay because we're gonna get a new passport photo anyway. Right. After the plastic surgery. Exactly. <laughs> right. And then once we got my child's face fixed, we got a new passport mm-hmm. photo. And then I thought my child was scared of the dog, who people looks even, very scary. And <laughs> people um, even forgave Raquel and Raquel's parents and Andy Cohen. Yeah. So people do it, and people. Right. Andy Cohen gave his dog away after thirteen years because he said it was aggressive. <laughs> now, whether you believe him or not is up to you. I don't. But you can do it. Yes. You just have to show some. Some sadness over it, but you're right. It has to be about the kid, and I think that's what we thought with Andy too. That was something with the children. Yeah, he said it was. He said it was aggressive to the kid. Summer is still here, and I know you're probably worrying about the strength of your deodorant. So listen up. I'm going to tell you about the only deodorant you'll ever need. It's called Lumi Whole Body Deodorant, and it's formulated for all the places that tend to get stinky when the weather warms up, like your pits, privates, and your feet. And for me, it's under the boob, under the boob. Not only does it go where other deodorants don't, it's also just outrageously effective. One application in the morning is clinically proven to block odor all day. So even if this summer feels like you're in Texas, which believe me, I needed this Lumi there and I used it, thank goodness, or you literally are in Texas like I was, you don't need to worry. 
Lumi has you covered with up to 72 hours of odor control. Ready to make this your freshest summer? Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for Juicy Scoop listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals over 40% off their starter pack. Use code Juicy Scoop for 15% off your first purchase at LumiDeodorant.com. That's code Juicy Scoop at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. The astronauts, my worst nightmare. <laughs> oh, ba- mm. I, I've been covering the story because I'm like, I never, ever want to go to space. Me neither. And obviously nobody's ever going to ask me. <laughs> you never know. You never but know. You never know. Butch and Sonny are going to be there till February. They yes. were supposed to be there one week. They left June. In June, they were supposed to be back June 14th. Um, now they said, you got to just stay there, uh, but we're going to send the dragon, the Elon Musk thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to come get you in February and we'll just leave two empty seats. You can hop on and come back through that. Mm -hmm. So the Boeing, and they said, the reason we can't take you right now is because whatever your spacesuit is an iPhone and this is an Android or something like they don't they're not compatible so they have to stay out there um until February and they're acting like everything's fine and the, their spouses are like it's fine no we FaceTime them they love it they love being out in space they love looking down on earth and they're like no we're totally fine and I'm like They've got to act like that. Otherwise, they may never get them or they may just like blow it up and be like, oh, sorry, there was a really Mm -hmm. bad accident. So I think they're just going to they're just rolling along. And then when she gets back, listen, Sonny, um, I want to exclusively offer you your first podcast (laughs) interview. Do not go to my competitors, no matter how much they pay you. I will make it worth it. For you, and <laughs> trust me, because I need to know what you were thinking, and how it must be horrified. And could you horrified. and like, did you fall in love with with Butch at any oh point? Yeah, like, what if you're really just like, we're going to be out here till? I mean, they have a bunch of supplies. They said they'll be they'll be fine till February. But what if? But what if they go? Okay, now it's going to be June. Like, do they have years and years exactly. and years of it? No, they Are don't. They alone, or are there other people there? They're um because if they're alone, they're fucking. Oh, I don't think they can get out of their outfits. Oh, okay, no, oh, they, they can, can get out. They can. If oh, they're in a they're space eventually... station. They can. Oh. They can float around. And they're gonna have to change when they bring the new spacesuits. Yeah. But I thought there was other. I people think there. I would. I think I would. Fuck. I think I'd yeah. be like, I've never experienced an affair. This might be the end <laughs> of our lives. Let's just try it and see. And also space sex. Floating, floating yeah, around. Then really... would you tell? <laughs> Your spouses, when you get home, that you did it. No, I'd save it for Juicy Scoop. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's you'd be the having question. to do. You'd be <clears throat> having to do Juicy Scoop from there, you like on to. Facetime. Could you Hello. imagine? <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to. Well, wait, here's the here's the topic. <laughs> Uh, oh my God! He Spa- the astronauts are the weirdest people, and I weird, weird isn't good. Thank God they do they do what they do. Yeah. I find it to be a nightmare from hell. To me, it's like being underwater. I would never want to be in a submarine. I don't want to be. Yeah, I don't want to be in a I don't want to be a submarine either. anywhere that I can't get out of. The space is to me the scariest, most uncontrolled thing in the in the world. We don't. You, do, I watch space movies. You can't even. It's so Remember when horrific. Sandra Bullock was like Gravity. <laughs> and then it was like Nope, she's she was, she was om- and she was almost like out of her oxygen or whatever. Yep. That's I mean, that's why I feel when I my phone is down to like eight <laughs> percent. I can't imagine like it's your air. Your air. Mm-mm. And your then I, air. I just I was just so happy when she finally got and jumped in that lake, finally came back. Yes. And yes. then her legs looked so good <laughs> in those shorts. And I was just like, uh, yeah. And then, so I was talking about it with Peter. He goes, well, they know. They know it's a risky job. Yeah, I go, they, they do? Yeah, they, they know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they don't sell it as a risky job. Not like not like you're going to be a combat Marine. Like, th- those people know if you're going to go to war, there's a really good chance you're going to die. If you're a cop, there's a really good chance you might die. But I feel like astronauts are not 
taught not that they could. No, and I think so. No, and that teacher went up do. there. I she did not think that thing was going to explode. She thought it was like going up in an airplane. You know, I, I think I do think though that astronauts in general do have to. They do have intensive training with, you know. I mean, at least from what I've seen. I mean, I'm t- just just from watching movies. So. <laughs> From what I've seen, it's like they have to be given all of the, you know there's no air, you know there's no gravity, you know that you're going into a thing that we have no control of, and so there is this major, major gamble. I do think that with Kristen McAuliffe in that time, they were so cocky. That was the Titanic. That thing was the Titanic, for sure. That was the Well, they say that is why um, Gen Xers, because you guys are younger than I, so you did not see it in the classroom. But when they say that is why Gen Xers are the way we are with our kids and everything is because we witnessed it. So imagine the, the, your kids, okay? Imagine children today. They well, it we was all a, do it, it was a Punky Brewster episode. <laughs> oh, they did on Punky Brewster. Okay, yeah. well they exactly what you're describing. Okay, so and it was horrific. So yeah, like I remember <laughs> it like yesterday. I remember the, which classroom I was in at at St. Mel's, and they roll. Everyone got the TV rolled in. And all the teachers are excited because the teacher is going. And then we see it. And Mm-mm. and I remember being like, we all are kind of like, wait a minute. There's no way that that thing isn't like exploded and it won't come back down or whatever. And then they were just like, okay. And then they just rolled the thing back. <laughs> and we all just stayed in school and did our work. And like teachers are crying. And we mm. are just, you know, that was it. No counseling, no what that was like, the 80s. and yeah, <laughs> and then yeah, and I think that's why we parent the way we do. Like so many things are just so different than what, yeah, how fucked up that was, and it was no one's fault. They didn't expect it. They thought no, it'd be a fun not. thing. Yeah, well, that is the reason that I know the Punky Brewster episode is the reason that I wouldn't now have done that, like Jeff Bezos one that um, no. William Shatner did, right? Because I thought that looked kind of fun and cool. But I'm just like, I'm waiting for every single one of those to go up and explode. Yeah. They're, the level that they can't, the, with the, when with these two people too, is like, there was a problem with the boosters and then there's a, with the other ship, they had a problem with our, It's like, whatever is technology that we're doing for space, we just cannot get it together. Even the suits you know are wrong. wrong. We right? just the suits are wrong. The su- it's like, we cannot, all of the... From Back to the Future and in the 80s or in the 90s, whatever, we're supposed to have flying cars. We're supposed to be flying around a thing. We're supposed to be able to go through the wormhole. We're supposed to be able to go (laughs) through the black hole. We can't do any of it. Well, of course, people, you know, a lot of people don't believe we ever went to the moon. And the first time I heard that was from Keenan Ivor Waynes in the 90s when I was working on his late night talk show. He was the first person that I ever heard. Really? He was like, there's no way we went to the moon. That was the first time I ever heard that. And, And I go, he goes... It was a soundstage. You can see, and he brought up all the things like who took the photo and why would the fl- why would the flag be waving like that and all these things that I was like, oh whoa, and then like, <laughs> and then I and then it kind I never heard it until like uh, the last few years of like TikTok. But I'm mm. telling you, he said it in like 1997. That we tricked him to make the Soviets spend all their money to go to the moon, right? That's in or, the movie that we just the saw. The- right? Or the theory is maybe we went. And then we're like, why don't we make Recreate. a movie of it so that the America gets excited? That's the other thought. Yeah, we did go, but of course, you know, the astronaut wasn't calling Nixon on a landline in 1960, whatever it was, and talking to him. I mean, yeah, like of course. So that they're like, well, of course, that part. Yeah. Um. Anyway, just have Drakey Poo come in and tell us about what's going <laughs> wrong with the Tesla. And yeah. that's pretty much what's going wrong with whatever Elon Musk is doing going up. They're all just like, can we get the window down or what? Do we have to get a special app? Yeah, right. Now there's a glitch. And it's just, just there's like, always dude. a glitch with space. There's <laughs> something about space that we cannot conquer. Obviously, we can, uh, or or it's not consistent. It's inconsistent. Like we can do it a little bit and then it'll blow up. Well, Paul, 13 we can made it. it through that hole. I'm saying we can do it a little. <laughs> and there's a space station. There's astronauts that are constantly living all the time now in a space station. Like all the time, so we can do it. And but what we do you mean? They don't come home either. No, no they're there and for they, months and, just, and it's years. A, takes, and it's a money like suck. Yeah, and they just live up there eating their freeze dried food. And it's like, <laughs> come on home. You're not doing any research. You're all jerking I mean, off. They think that they're trying. You know, Brandon are went they... to go see that alien movie, and he told me about it. It was it good. Not. I mean, I acted like I was interested because it was one of our last days together. But I was like, I don't need to see this movie and I don't care about this weird alien. What about The Martian? I love that movie. 
I don't care. Matt Damon? No? Oh, Matt Damon. Well, Alien's like out now. Um, oh, this oh, 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 this oh. is this TikToker, Jules LeBron. Oh, okay. And she became famous because a couple weeks ago, she had a viral video go where she goes, very demure, very mindful. See how I wear my things? Very demure. And everyone took the sound and celebrities did it, whether they were talking about their kids at a party or themselves. See, see how yeah. I drink my water? Very demure, very <laughs> mindful. Well, everybody gets their well, like anyway. dog in a wig. Very demure, very yeah. mindful. We do all yes, those yes. tricks. A bird is walking. Very demure, <laughs> very, very de- mindful. Yeah. So unfortunately, okay. she um, did not trademark it, and just did a crying video that she since deleted, and realized that this guy has trademarked it, and he, um, Ew. yeah, he trademarked it. What a scam! And he's trademarked other sayings in the past and things like that. So that now she was hoping that she went to go trademark it because she was like, all right, you know, some people probably was like, you got to get the merch and everything, like the something about her merch, and they said it to Daryl, like, you have this little yeah. window, Hawk 2 girl, you know, to get it. And um, so I'm guessing... They'll, someone will probably start a fund or whatever, or at least yeah. go to the guy and be like, "How much can we have it for?" Yeah, he needs to be trolled. Yes, yeah, he they, does. They, oh, they've, what an asshole! They've said who he is and everything. Okay. I just don't have it in front of me. Um, this weekend, uh, Sutton and Kathy Hilton were dancing, and they were. Thank God the DJ played Michael Jackson because that is her favorite. Yes, and. It was like Pretty Young Thing or one of those songs that and they were dancing to it and karaoke. Kathy, and just having Kathy a blast. Hilton is doing karaoke she, she in West singing, Hollywood. And she was yes. singing it well. Yes. And their dancing was good too, even though, you know, they're tipsy. But they were good, I thought. I thought Kathy Hilton was She good. had her uh, estate sale this weekend. And, and it cost $25 to go. And it was mostly all of it was on the tennis court. So I don't think you could be like walking through the rooms. But... It looked like there was there was some good stuff, but um, some memorabilia and some fun stuff. I also recognized a, a white pineapple bookcase thing that I got from Target. Was there? I just saw it in the video. Mm-hmm. So like, I think there like was the some time random. When, There's some you, good and some great. Like probably, the time when you average. gave away things from your old office and included a gift Julie and I gave you. <laughs> yes, that was awful. Yeah, it's a good thing you didn't see anything you had previously given Kathy Hilton in the estate sale. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that, <laughs> look at her. That's the mm. that's the problem with doing a, f- a famous person's estate sale. Heather's yes. going through a box. I'm giving away these Barbies and all this junk from my former office, and pulls out the gift. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, huh? No, mm. we didn't care. Actually, did you give it back to us? I think I you think did. I did because yeah. it was a really beautiful lighter, and yeah. I go, I just and I and yeah. because I have the thumb problem, I can't. I can't work regular lighters. And you said you were scared of fire. That and was I'm scared of fire and, and lighters. Yeah. <laughs> and turning the on a gas. keep going to turning... different things. I have carpal tunnel in my thumb. Gold makes me have a reaction. I, def- a no, I definitely don't have the strength to do the t- with the lighter. Mm. I don't. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Um, this is from the Bravo snark, but it's also from TMZ, that Mauricio is out with his new girlfriend. They are just having fun. Okay. And and Ky- I saw Kyle was having fun taking some ass shots, posting those because her body looks good. And then I saw in her stories that this girl came out and was like out in a window and it was someone from, I think, Morgan's band. So I think she's hanging out with Morgan. Oh, still. good. I think you can't really hmm. you can't compete with like out in the wild, sexy photos with thirst traps. Like if I could give her advice and I do was going to do a book called One Month and Ten Steps to Getting Your Ex Back. Usually oh. af- after the end of this process, people won't want the ex back. But, you know, I could say that, you know, Kyle might not want to be remarried to him, but I guarantee you she wants his interest back. She's like yeah. pissed right now. And the first thing she needs to do is stop posting thirst traps because they're not going to compare. I don't care how good her butt looks to this. Well, um, also this chick's ass looks pretty nice too. Yeah, I mean, well, Joey Lawrence, remember Joey Lawrence? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He allegedly had an affair. So he broke up with his wife of a couple years. And then this guy announced, yeah, because you had an affair with my wife. They were doing a movie that the wife, he was starring in it and the wife wrote and directed it. It was called 
um, Socked for Christmas or something. It's like a holiday movie. And they had an allegedly ha- he had an affair with her and she was married as well. And now they're getting divorced and she's and the wife is asking for custody of the kid and everything. Is that the wife or the affair? I think that's the wife. I mean, you can knock Samantha me over with a feather. I could have sworn you're going to say wife. an affair with, an, with a man, but. Yeah. I mean, it's so disappointing when it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's it really only is. a fun. It's only fun when it's that. Yeah. Um, anyway, here are stars that separated from their spouses after 20 years of marriage. Mm. And Meryl Streep has had her husband for 45 years. Wow. But they now, they're not divorced, but they live separate lives. And she was, you sent me this one, she was on the red carpet with Martin Short because they're both in... Um, Only murder- murders in the building. Yeah. And they were holding hands and there were rumors prior to that they, that they were romantic. And he really? is a widower. He is a widower of many years. Yeah. But his wife had was, died a long time ago. He was really in love with his wife. Yeah. And they had a great love story. Yeah. And let's never forget when Kathy <clears throat> Lee Gifford... Um, said, how's your wife yeah. on the Today Show? And then he said, she's good. And then everyone later was like, uh, she's dead and you're drunk on wine, Kathy. And then Kathy felt so terrible. But he's such a sweet guy that he just wanted to, he didn't want to make her feel terrible. On, yeah, because it, li- it was a live show. Yeah. yeah. So, he, But I, nothing could make our vaginas explode more than Meryl Streep, who is the best actor to ever, ever have lived live on the planet, on the planet. The so come for us. The world, including Shakespeare times, including <laughs> Greek hi- history times. We want the the Oscars to be renamed the Merrills. Like it's Academy Awards, but it should be like, oh my god, I got a Merrill. That's how much we love her and think she's so good. And Martin Short and her. And Martin Short does the Jiminy Glick, right? Yes. I could watch all day. Eight, if you guys, if you yeah. want to die of something funny, just look up Jiminy Glick, my, uh-huh. Martin Short's. Short, all short, sorry, Martin Short, all these videos. He created this character like 30 years ago. And I know the guy that he was, that he got the idea from. Uh It was this weird guy that had a, like a cable access show. I swear, because I remember the first time I saw Mm. it, I go, I know he came. I used to watch like weird cable access stuff Mm. back in the day. Like I'd be back in the 90s. And it was just like, oh, to help me. <laughs> and, like, and, it's, and nobody could keep a straight face. And the things that he asks. And he just did a whole week, I think, Jimmy of, Kimmel. of Jimmy yeah. Kimmel doing it. Oh, my God. But if I could just, if he could please do Meryl Streep. Could uh, you please do that? Uh, I know he kidding. probably doesn't because they're a couple and he doesn't want to do it, get a weird character for her. But I, I mean, they, he, he might have done sure. her before because he's might done have. everyone. He's we could yeah. look and you know, see. We should look and Tom see. Cruise. I could just, just like, watch. I could literally watch. Oh. If I'm ever on death row, along with my death row meal, mm. I think I just want to watch yeah. those Agreed. videos. Just, we have been in a, in a, in a Jiminy the, Glick K-hole. So like many you different wouldn't times. even believe. And I would tell like, your, your audience, because the one little known one is on Netflix. Because you can go on oh, YouTube. Yes, and just, yeah. You can just oh go and Google it. But if you go on Netflix and look up, it's like... He does the... It's like a Netflix awards show. It, no, it was the Independent Spirit Awards. Oh, that's okay. right. On Netflix. And Netflix had like a lobby, like a little setup yeah. for him to interview people coming in. <sighs> okay. And so it, it's available on Netflix and it's like a half hour long and it's so good. You just get... You just, and it's live. It's so... Like on a red carpet kind of thing. Fucking hilarious. Plus, though, there's a movie called Jiminy Glick in La La Land. And also... Which also... Stacks up. Worth watching. Yeah. Worth watching. I had uh. to go watch... <clears throat> um, only murders in the building, which I hadn't. I tried whatever, but then when I saw that that them, I immediately went right to the season three, <laughs> episode one. Let me see Meryl Streep from the second. It's like she's just amazing. So the rumor is, and they do that have she always that they had an agreement that she could always have affairs with her co-stars. With her, oh, her husband and her? Yeah, because that always, and like, you know, I think, you know, there was a rumor that she got it on with Clint Eastwood. Yeah. And what was that one where she was the Italian? Bridges one? Over the Madison County. Yeah, oh, oh. Bridges of Madison and Jack, County. Jack Nicholson. And yeah, oh. like any, yes, any kind of movie that she yeah. was like, I'm doing it. But then she was one of those people that then when the movie ended, you know, she Bye, packed up her vagina and left her trailer <laughs> and that was that. Just Don't... like Butch and Sonny. Yeah. The, the, the space <laughs> is time's over. Okay. I got to go home. She said on The View, like, it's like, I feel like Julie's the one who told me this, but it was like a famous thing on The View. This is the only reason I found out was because she was like, 
they asked her about some old movie, and I don't even remember which one it was. And she was like, "Ugh, I just spent the whole time in his trailer or something." And yes. I was like, Girl! "I think that might be Clint, the Clint Eastwood oh, okay. one." I was like, "Because I think that was, I think so." Oh, yeah, she's fucking an icon. She is a legend. She, she even just, that's that where I amazing. first thought about drinking in a tub. Oh, because cause Bridges Madison British, County. Yeah, he's like, "Would you like a beer or something in the tub?" And I was just Ugh. like. Also, sounds so nice. <laughs> also, why have was, I never thought of that? I was like young too, like so I probably just started drinking, and I was like, yeah. oh, I never thought about drinking in a tub. There's just always a smart thing to do. Yeah, get wasted in a tub <laughs> right, by yourself. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Make sure the water's real warm. <laughs> yeah, and get nice and comfy. Hopefully, you're real tired. Yeah, real tired. Plus, she was yeah. lezzing out with Cher in Silkwood. Let's oh. not for anybody that cares. I do, <laughs> but that was oh my lord. I mean, so good. I don't know if she ever did lesbian affairs in life. Who knows? I think she's. Oh, I, I think, think she she's did. done it. Well, I got to tell you, I about think she's this. done it. Have you heard about this? The new yes, we saw that Dance Moms <laughs> had this this little girl. Uh, I saw the clip. Apparently, the dance the new dance leader lady said hello. Said I want you. Well, you guys saw it, so tell me tell yeah. them what happened. This girl's name is uh, Ashlyn. Ashlyn. Um, she, she does look approximately 27. <laughs> she looks like a, like a little person. Yeah. That little, per, like an adult little person. She's, like she's so and the beautiful. the way the makeup is and everything, like. She's so beautiful she, and like she, mature in the face. They had her dress up like John Bonet. So let me just yeah. say that first. Okay. So go on. Tell me, tell them what happened. Is that what this drama is about? Because yeah, there was so never she, ending inappropriate dances on this season of this. So what I, the clips I saw is that they, she goes, you're going to do. Uh, John Bonet Ramsey, a dance about it. She was kidnapped and murdered. And so I need you to Google it and look it up mm -hmm. <laughs> to the little girl. So mm -hmm. then she gets in her outfit with her hair and dresses like John Bonet in a pageant. And when she's doing the dancing, like the interpretive dancing, she ends it choking herself. Because oh. they tell her she was strangled to death. Yeah. You just can't casually. believe it. You just, yeah, it's un. It's almost. It's it's almost unwatchable, but it's so unbelievable you have to keep watching. But yeah. I mean, the producers, when this happens, whether they put it in the lady's idea or it, in the woman's head or not, they just must be like filming it and then like literally doing a dance in oh, the back. Because they're like, they're like squeezing each other's hands like we can't believe I, this We is cannot happening. believe this is happening. Yeah. There's no way anybody is like, maybe we shouldn't show this. No. And they you know, know I don't want to do a spoiler. But the very last final dance, which happens at nationals, okay, does involve, you know, body bags and basically oh, right. all of the children. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, what? Yes. Tell, tell. So you're you're they're not going to get mad about a spoiler? No, I don't remember if it was like a mass shooting or school. They did shooting. a dance about a school shooting. Yeah. Wait. Or oh no, wait. It was wait no, no, it was opioid, opioid. It's overdose. It's fentanyl overdose. It's fentanyl overdose. And then in preceding the dance, it's my cousin died of a fentanyl overdose. And then they brought in some people that kid died of a opioid overdose. Then she wanted them to do a dance where they all had to get a, into body bags, to get into body, where all the girls except for one survive. Um, and they all end up in a body bag dead. <laughs> and then oh the other in a dance, there's a final girl <clears throat> in the middle. And it's like, well, of course, you're going to win nationals. Who's going to go? I didn't like the one where they all died. I'm going to vote for the one where they did Michael Jackson. Right. Oh, my God. Well, what are they going to do about Michael Jackson? <laughs> then touch him, touch him. Yeah, that's true. Then, there's, then there's one that's dressed up like Kathy Hill. Can you just play my best friend Michael Jackson's music? I'd like to see that. No. Um, Throughout the whole season, though, they did one where that's the little girl had, was um, upset because her husband was cheating on her. There was one where... <laughs> She's a 12 year old girl. And then the teacher's like, you got to be really upset. He cheated on you. He cheated on you with another woman. And it's like, she doesn't have her period. <laughs> and no, none of these people understand what you're talking about. He's, he cheated on you with another woman. Your heart's broken. Your heart's broken. Your heart's broken. And she's dancing around like her heart's broken because her husband cheated on her. She's 12. There's, she made two of them be lesbian girlfriends. Yep. Two of them be lesbian girlfriends. Now listen. And that was the least offensive one. That was the least of all of them. <laughs> but that she's was like the this, I don't see any chemistry. You're <laughs> right. out. And yeah. then replaces them. Right. Like, And then all of a sudden the girls are like, let's make out. We have anything to keep the part. Right. We have chemistry. Like, you are <laughs> Wait, so then the 12-year-olds did kiss? Yeah, no, they were younger. They didn't. 
they didn't kiss. Well, they kissed on the cheek, but they were needed to start. She kept being more chemistry, and they right. were younger than 12. So yeah, they were. I'm t- The 12 year old, that was the one whose husband cheated on her. But the lesbians <laughs> were like, eight. I mean, it, it was just like, what are we doing here? I don't. Oh my God. Well, we just got a bunch of pe- more people to watch this thing. <laughs> Sister wives, Christine Brown, who is now married uh, to, to her new husband. That is coming back September 15th. Oh. And it looks like even Robin goes, I feel like the the idiot who's still left. Like, so I think she's going to be the next one out. She is not happy being the last one left with, with she, Cody. Like literally just being a normal married person. And people always think that they're, she's all her conversations are outside of her house. and They're always cold. You know, they're always sitting yeah. on like a park bench. <laughs> and it's because that people believe that she's like a total hoarder. Mm. Oh, really? And that's why they like never like film in her house. Well, Sister Wives is our thing together, us three. For so sh- shop a shopaholic. If thing. she yeah, if she leaves him this season, like I don't know, we might have to do like a special party or something because that's I mean, going to be crazy. Drew Barrymore says that she um, they they're doing two more seasons with our friend Ross Matthew. Wow. But she said that she is going to work on <laughs> more physical distance from her guests. Oh, oh no! Well, no, and I don't think wait. she should at all. But then no. you and Julie won't be able to do this bit, <laughs> which you did on the top. No, literally, you got onto Julie's lap. No, we will never. <laughs> if anything, she needs to be more touchy with them. More, more. She needs. There's to be like, no way she should stop. How long have you been um, <laughs> yeah. in acting? She needs to do all of it. She needs to just be like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Brandy, <laughs> let me get this straight. You and Julie were in China and she doesn't have a passport. <laughs> How does a friendship withhold a situation like that? Because I have some good girlfriends and Ross and I are besties, but I don't know. Am I a bad person? And then that's what I need. Then she straddles. Then she straddles. Yeah. It's like she needs to get close because it makes her like comprehend more. And <laughs> mm-hmm. that's why I don't want it to stop. No. You think that's her, mm. how she is able, like her listening comprehension is sort of yes. based on like getting more and more closer. Otherwise she gets distracted. Yeah. I think that's her thing. And I think it's her way of showing people that she really cares. Mm, yeah. I, don't I'm, stop I'm your thing. Don't stop. Yeah, it's your you. thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, this girl, Jasmine, speaking of like drugs, this is Jasmine Sanj- Sanja. She is the one that was known as the ketamine queen. Oh, I've been doing what Mar- is going apparently, on with So it? she met Brooke Mueller and and Brooke Mueller and Matt Perry also met. Brooke Mueller is Charlie Sheen's ex who's been in. I don't even know how many rehabs. And one thing about rehab is you're. You know, meeting a bunch of people <laughs> and that also have drug problems and they also know how to get the drugs. And unfortunately, that's how they all met. This lady? Yes. And so then when he got, mm. so they, Brooke Mueller is not being looked at as a criminal or anything, but she's part of the investigation because she, I don't know if she put them together or what, because there's all these other people. There's two doctors, his assistant that like gave him the drugs. But she went, she um, grew up in Calabasas and then she went to University of Irvine, um, UC Irvine. Then she got her master's in England. Then she came back and opened a nail salon, but that failed. So then she got into selling ketamine and killing people. (laughs) I mean, unbelievable. So so that was it. And then this doctor, the doctor who's in charge, he can, they they let him um, reopen. His uh, is- medical practice, he just has to put a sign on the door saying, so I, I killed Matthew Perry. I killed, I helped kill Matthew Perry. Because they're saying he was doing that thing where they do like ketamine therapy. Because that's like a thing. Did, was he prescribed that from he this was man? Giving, he was giving huge amounts to How to, this, practice- to the assistant who then was uh, he t- doing it, taught the assistant how to do it. That's just like what happened with Michael Jackson. It's just like a drug dealer is a drug dealer. I don't personally... A per, if you're a person who takes drugs, if you buy drugs off the street, like that's on you. I don't blame anybody else, but a doctor. Yeah, that you now you are to blame. You are a doctor prescribing oh, speak, speak. big amounts of drugs to someone where you know what it'll do, and you're no. Now you're done. You're done. You got to be done. Um, Kylie Jenner feels betrayed by Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> 
I just want to say, I completely forgot that these two even were a couple. Don't you feel like just nobody's talking about the Kardashians the way we used yeah. to? Yeah, I really do. And I think that's fine. Mm-hmm. Like, they made their billions. They all have their own company. Mm-hmm. I just am like, I don't hear anybody, like, watching the show on Hulu. And it's I just wonder pers- how many more years they have to do it. Because it just seems like they don't even want to. They don't even do, like, the scenes together. Like, yeah. they can't even be bothered to, like. And it's so, so, so produced that even when you knew it was produced on E, to some extent, you always felt like there was an A storyline that was real and then a B storyline yeah. with the Mo Digliani or yeah, whatever. The Digliani. Where, you know, Courtney and Scott <laughs> go to a yard sale and find a Mo Digliani, et cetera. It's like, okay. Mm. But I still we still enjoyed those fake storylines. But there was a lot of real stuff in it. And you knew ultimately they did even though they had control, like with Ryan Seacrest, they had ultimate like final say on the editing or Chris did. You still knew there was a part of it where I was in one of those fake store lines. Just yeah, oh, you were in so many. We would gag like you'd be walking in like to go do yoga and shit. We'd be like, "There's Heather." The yoga, the yoga <laughs> one. The yoga one was where I where I'll tell you exactly what happened. They were like, "Okay, do you, can you come over and like have drinks and and with with Chris and and film?" And I'm like, "Totally." So then I get there and they're like, "Just wait a minute." And then Chris came, and then. They're like, just you guys are going to act like you just came back from shopping. But I had not walked in the house yet. And then we walk in the house, and that's when we see Kim doing pregnant bar yoga, bar ballet, pregnant ballet. And so that I was surprised to see her and these other women. And but the other one that I did was the storyline was Scott has no friends. <laughs> <laughs> it was Scott has no friends. So therefore, can I come over? And do some stuff with Chris and these other friends of hers who I knew that were lovely. And then Scott's going to participate because he has no friends. So we had to do the painting. Oh, yeah. The painting that the old chestnut. Yeah. And then we did water aerobics in the pool. Ugh. Now, water aerobics is different. They don't do that on Housewives. But that painting. You know, it's supposed to be like, you know, and then we, the, law, the minute we got the scene done, then, you know. Scott the, went ahead and left. Scott left and yeah. then and Chris had to go do something but yeah. I said can I stay here can I stay and enjoy the pool and I did <laughs> I stayed for like another two hours they said her assistant Matthew came out and said you, Chris had to leave but like you're welcome do you need any Chardonnay or any snacks or anything wow. I said yes go ahead in that organized pantry with <gasps> all the jars and the labels and yeah give me some no snacks. I totally stayed and I went swimming I think that when it was on E, there was an element that when you watched it, you knew, first of all, the salads, which of course are still present mm. on the Hulu show, but you knew that they didn't have full control and that there was still stuff they didn't want in them. And there was a lot of crazy stuff with Scott and Courtney and, yeah. and you know, even just a ton of stuff. Now with Hulu, it's just not like that at all. And also just if you follow them, you know, it just, I, even though they had social media, it was like we really were watching stuff. That was happening. Like now everything. That's why I'm like, if they ever were to do a show again, I'd almost be like the turnaround time has to be like a week and you've got to hold your social media or something. Mm. I feel like something has to be done to get the the interest going. It's happening with Housewives, too, where the storylines proceed on social media. So do you guys know that there's a whole thing called hobby horsing? I have seen it's clips like we're of like this. young girls just take like a, a stick with like a little stuffed animal head on it that's a pony and they just it they get and they like leap they like do like they're like really on a horse but it doesn't look difficult at all and then some people are like hey at least those kids are off their phone and moving like stop being a bitch but it is kind of weird. It's like a real sport. There's like competitions and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right? I thought I thought maybe it was going to the Olympics. I wasn't sure cuz I saw like a full thing like that. Like they're in a full competition like they would with a normal horse. Then but they I, just do it. I like, don't even, it's but, okay to criticize JLo for having a Bridgerton party in midsummer, right. but we're not going to say that this is bizarre. Like you're on a, you're riding a stick with a horse head on the end and jumping over <laughs> and stuff. And acting like you do with a horse. So they, they're, so they're doing, like, oh. they're doing, 
good job. Yeah, but then they're they're doing it like they would, like you would if you were in a competition with a horse. What like, do they do with a horse? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Like like a, I don't know the names of the things like a harbonet and a dubadou and a dubonet or whatever, and they go over the jumps. Yeah, they do all the things you would do with a horse, but, but they do it a with stick. a stick. It's weird. It's weird, and also like, didn't you get like a little bit aroused doing that? Yeah, you're riding you're a stick. Yeah, just there's you're a stick rubbing. like right on your. Yeah, but Maybe also just... I I I went down a rabbit hole of these people that um, they call it cosplay mothering, and they have this one girl. She has like four kids, but they're all like those fake dolls, like the realistic baby ones. Yeah, and sometimes she just she the last time she just was like, I can only take one, so she only took one on the trip where all everybody was there. And then I've seen people like actually went to a hotel. I've been to a hotel where I've seen a furry convention. That's pretty scary. But then this this someone filmed like, oh my god, I'm at a hotel where everybody's with their like fake babies and like, oh, can I see your fake baby? And then so then she's like, they're like point of view. Yeah, she, she's like point of view. Shake filmed herself coming home. You haven't seen your two other kids for two days. <laughs> and then she. Like, Meaning her baby dolls. Yeah, and then she like hugs them, and then she, you know, she has a dad, and she's single. And you mean she has a father for the dolls? No, she has her own dad. Oh, okay. That's obviously like (laughs) okay. So then they they had a beach day. They had a beach day, and they uh, there was a you know a lot to bring. But is she a child or is she an adult? No, she's like a thirty something. And so the dad Mm. is there, like an old like grandpa, and she Mm. is like my. My first time, my um, twins are gonna, you know, get their feet wet in the water, and she, she like Her twins. I can't. I just can't. And she's like, "Come on, Gampy, Gampy, <laughs> come put the twins in the water." I mean, Madison. Well, I think he's kind of like, "I've raised this this girl, and you know what? At least she's happy." True. Yes. And whatever it is, he's just like, okay. You well, know? whatever it is that he may be, I mean, I'm responsible for it. But yeah, it's like these people, <laughs> you know what I mean? But these people, what about the guys who have full relationships with life size dolls? Oh, there's this other guy that's, there's this Asian guy that is, let me hold on. I'm going to find this really quick and then we're going to wrap it up because I know it's here. Okay. This guy had a full on wedding. He says he's fictosexual. And What's that he, mean? he had a wedding with a little anime doll. He oh, married you know so it's and not get, a doll you know that he can have sex with. It's just an anime doll. This it's is like what gay AI people doll. get uh, this is what gay people this is what gay people get blamed for. Okay? This is what gay people get blamed for. If you get married, he's gonna get married to a doll. And you know what? He did. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he did. And we're all gonna get blamed for it because people he came made to the wedding and stuff. Like people were there. They were just like, you know what? We're super happy that Jimmy is. And then those parents, you know what? Settling down. Anyone. He's settling down. And then those parents need to be friends with the grandpa that has to take his fake grandchildren dolls to the beach. Yeah. And you know what they have in common? They all saw the Challenger blow up in the classroom, oh. <laughs> and these are their kids now. Oh, shit. <laughs> let's hope not. Let's hope Full not. Circle. Why Full circle. Have... Full circle moment. <laughs> girls. Yes. Girls, mm. tell everyone they can, where they can get more Brandy and Julie in their lives. Well, we have a pod, free podcast every Tuesday called Dumb Gay Podcast. Anywhere you get your podcasts. You can go to julieandbrandy.com. That's Julie and Brandy spelled out. Brandy mm-hmm. with a Y. You can just Google Julie and Brandy podcast. We also have a Patreon. We do that. You know, three times a week, there's plenty of tiers to fit <laughs> all the budgets. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the 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 free podcast is right now up until the election is very political. So if that's not your jam, check out our Patreon because that's not political at all. But you might want the fun political stuff and you might want to know what's going on. And that's where you go and get it from your two girls that you know and love. We talk about politics like we talk about reality TV. We want it to be fun. We want everybody to be able to be included. It doesn't matter where you, whatever you think, oh, I can't be part of the conversation. I don't know enough. You know, you know enough. If you pay taxes, you you have a seat right at the table. (laughs) We all deserve to be there. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. And of course, you're going to see us in Vegas. So get your tickets, then book your room, hopefully at the Venetian, because that's mm. where we'll be strutting around. 
We're going to be um, girls trip. It, but if, uh, but oh if not, you just go there. Um, get your tickets at HeatherMcDonald.net for September 20th before they sell out. Because you will be bummed. It's going to be juicy. It's going to be funny, as always. Thank you.